One of the most common questions I get from you all in the comments section is how I actually buy, exchange, and trade cryptocurrency. So today, I'm gonna to show you my process for both buying crypto with a credit or debit card and also trading it on a decentralized exchange. I think a lot of people have a misconception that this process is complicated. But I think once you see how easy it actually is, it may be tough to go back to the dark side of traditional finance. So let me show you exactly what I mean right now. What's up? And thanks for clicking in. My name is Jason and in this video, I'm gonna show you the methods I personally use to buy and trade cryptocurrencies. There are really two parts to this. First part is you have to convert your fiat currency, your dollars, your euros, your yen, whatever you have to cryptocurrency. And this can only be done on a centralized exchange. And second is once you have your Bitcoin or your Ethereum or something else, how can you use that to trade for some of these up and coming projects that may not be available on Binance or Coinbase or crypto.com? With DeFi just exploding, I think now could be a great time to get involved. I will show you my step-by-step -step process and also give you some tips I've learned along the way to save on fees and lock in some profits. If you do find this video helpful, please do me a huge favor and hit that like button. It helps this channel out so much, so I really appreciate that one second it takes for you to press that thumbs up. Now let's jump in and get started. All right, I'm gonna bring my phone here because that's where I transact with cryptocurrency. A lot of these apps, you can use the website as well, but for me, it's just easier to use my phone. So that's where we are right now, and I'm gonna bring you into my crypto folder, and these are the apps that I generally use to buy crypto with a credit or debit card. I don't use all of them, but I do use most of them. So I'll take you into each one of them. Uh, Coinbase here, gotta authenticate these. So you can see I don't use Coinbase a whole lot, $6.80, but you can go in here to Bitcoin if you wanted to, or uh, the various other cryptocurrencies, they're adding all the time, and they have a huge user base. So when Coinbase adds a cryptocurrency to their uh, portfolio of, of uh, cryptocurrencies that you can buy, it's usually a good sign for that currency. So uh, you can see here, my BTC wallet on Coinbase is zero. If I go into it, I can trade, I can set up recurring buying, I can, I it gives me an address that I can give to a friend if people want to send it to me as well. So this is Coinbase. You can go into your portfolio, all your different coins here. You can see what they offer. Um, they also just show you different prices on coins they don't offer. So if you just wanted to use it to track different prices, it's good as well. I'm not going to go too deep into each one of those. That's Coinbase. Uphold, another wallet. Looks pretty much the same. All of these are going to look generally the same. I don't use Uphold that much for buying cryptocurrency, but I do use Uphold as my wallet to uh, get bat tokens. So I use the Brave browser, and if you use the Brave browser, you know you can set up to get um, bat tokens for using the Brave browser. So I do get my, you can see $73. That's $73 for just browsing the internet, guys. So that's pretty cool. It all comes in this basic attention token or BAT token. But you can come in here as well. You, you have a BTC card and you can transact, you can buy and do other things. So you can do that here. You can go in here and, and transact. It also has a built-in exchange as most of them do as well. So that's Uphold. Uh, Binance, I used to use Binance quite a bit. It was my exclusive uh, exchange for buying and exchanging cryptocurrencies. I don't have anything in there as well. I am in the US, so Binance is no longer available. The regular Binance exchange, you can go through the Binance US exchange, but I have so many that I work with right now that I don't see the need to go through Binance. Um, Robinhood, getting rid of that, I suggest you do the same. Just terrible company. Uh, I'm waiting for my funds to settle and then gone. Crypto.com is really good. I, I've used Crypto.com for a long time. I've staked tokens. I've staked CRO tokens. I've done previous videos on Crypto.com. Uh, they used to offer a 0%. And I think if you're a new customer that you just signs up, I think they give you 0% transaction fees on buying and... Um, or buying crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, other cryptocurrencies with your credit and debit card. So they were doing that for everybody. Now I believe, well, let's see how much it is. If I were to go here to Bitcoin and if I wanted to buy, let's say I wanted to buy, I'm not get crazy here. I'll buy, I'll just say that. 
So cool. They're only charging you a 2.99% card fee. So that's, that's really good. And that's why I use crypto.com probably more than the others because they have that low fee. You will want to note, like depending on what bank you're using, I use Bank of America. I'll just use Capital One if I'm using a credit card. You will want to check with that bank or you will see on your bank statement, they may charge you an international transaction fee. Um, so something to take note of, it's a 2.9 plus, I don't know what your bank is going to charge you. But crypto.com generally is is one of the cheaper ones. Uh, if you are getting charged a high international transaction fee, you may wanna check out this M1. Now M1, I use them mainly for just uh, holding, holding stocks. I'm not gonna sign in right now, but I will leave a link to M1 below. What's cool about M1, you can get a debit card through them and they don't charge you any international transaction fees. They also don't charge you any ATM fees and other cool stuff like that. So M1's really cool. I do use that sometimes when I'm funding my crypto wallets because I don't wanna pay that international transaction fee. So just a little tip there, uh, when you are using a debit or a credit card, if you have an M1 or some of these other crypto um, backed debit cards they don't or they waive they sometimes reimburse or waive that international fee so that's a cool tip right there and then atomic wallet atomic wallet charges a five percent flat fee uh it looks like with the minimum of 10 us dollars for transactions so that's a little higher than crypto.com but this is a cool exchange and what's cool about uh um atomic wallet they allow you to stake different coins as well so you can come in here depending on what you have band i was staking band for a long time back when it was about two dollars and fifty cents at the 17 percent and that was a really good deal for me so you can come in here and you can stake in this wallet as well so that's all the wallets that i use to uh buy and sell crypto if i want to convert it from crypto to fiat now i want to jump into my computer and i'm going to show you my metamask and we're going to look at a decentralized exchange and i'll show you how that works all right this is metamask.io and this is the crypto wallet that i use for doing decentralized exchanges so when you use a company like binance crypto.com they they're holding your private keys so they're keeping them safe and when you want to transact they're providing your private keys so you they're yours but they're holding them for you with um, hardware wallets or something like MetaMask, which is a Chrome plugin. Basically, you'll go here, you'll download this. It comes up here in your Chrome. So it becomes a wallet, you sign into it. You're gonna go through the process of creating a private key. And there's no KYC with this. There's no bank, there's nothing. It's just a private address for you to store your ERC20 tokens. So those are Ethereum based tokens. So once you buy Ethereum from crypto.com or one of these other exchanges, you can come here, create a MetaMask account and you will, once you create it, you'll have an address. So I have an account here. You can create as many accounts as you want. So this is on the main net Ethereum and it'll give you this and you can send from the centralized exchange to this address that you own and your private key here is being stored in your your chrome browser or your internet browser so it's using the same encryption as ssl and it's very secure and you own it this is yours no one knows i mean i don't want to say no one knows about it. i don't want to be like shady about it but like this is yours and no one can take this from you so once you have this set up and you have some some funds in here you can see i have some ethereum full transparency what i have here guys uh, i have some xio this is trust swap i have some uniswap i have some weth and we'll talk about what wrapped ether is and why that's kind of a good thing to have I have some sxp as well and i actually have some other stuff here i have something called barter barter trade and that's on here so if you do set this up and you have some tokens, maybe your, all your tokens aren't showing up here, you can come over here and add a token. And when you do that, you'll be able to search it, but it's probably not gonna come up here. So you'll come over here to this custom token. So I have this one called Barter Trade, and I can come over here to Etherscan. And all I did was do a, a search for Barter Trade contract address, and go to etherscan.io because it's trusted. Copy that address. Then you can come back to your, your wallet here. Go back, add a custom token and you just paste that address here and it comes up, it knows it's BART. And when you hit next, it's going to, eventually it'll populate, you'll add the tokens. Eventually it'll populate, I have some, I do have some here. Um, it'll, it'll come up eventually. So if you don't see one of your tokens here, that's kind of the way to resolve it. But 
once you get up once you get set up with metamask you can come and use a decentralized exchange so a lot of you are asking me like i put dos i put bonfi i put some of these others in my top picks where can i actually get those because they're not available you can come over here to a place like one inch exchange and one inch is a dex or decentralized exchange and when you think of like an exchange in the terms of stocks you're going to a place like TD Ameritrade, and you're giving them your dollars, and in exchange for those dollars, they're giving you shares of Apple stock, and then when you want to give the Apple stock back, you give it back to them, and they give you the dollars back. So a decentralized exchange works in the same way, but there's no TD Ameritrade. It's just people that have the stuff that you want. So it could be anybody, and with a decentralized exchange, they call it a liquidity pool. So when I come here and I want to exchange, let's just say Ethereum for DAI, it'll come here and it'll tell me one Ethereum is 1788, and then it'll tell me ask me, I can swap my tokens because you'll see I'm already connected with my MetaMask wallet here. First time you come, it'll ask you to connect and you'll just hit the button to connect there. But once you're connected, you can swap these tokens. So you're not going to a central entity. You're going to people that have funded one inch exchange or other ones because one inch is actually an aggregator so there's other decentralized exchanges and one inch is pulling all of those exchanges together to give you the best liquidity and best bang for your buck essentially so you can come here and you can do this and you can exchange and the great part about this is very low fees although you know the ethereum network right now is suffering from high gas fees but the fees that you pay for actual exchanging is very low and once you've exchanged and you have some of these tokens here, you can actually yourself become a liquidity provider. So we're on the exchange page here, but if we come over here to the DAO or Decentralized Autonomous Organization, it's gonna pop us over to the governance page. And with one inch, they actually have their own token, which is the one inch token, which is actually just kind of exploding right now. It's up you know, over five times since January 13th. So it's up huge, but what that is, is a governance token. So when you own one inch, you can participate in the governance and the network. And guys, I, I think this is going to be a very popular and powerful mechanism, whether it's one inch or Uniswap or, or these other decentralized exchanges, we've seen what happened with GameStop. There is a lack of trust now in the stock market. And the stock market is a $77 trillion market. That money is going to migrate. So governance in one inch is going to be, you know, increasingly valuable so that's what that is here on this page you can also come over here to the pools tab and let's say you had ethereum and usdc you had both of those or you had ethereum and Dai, or any of these other combinations here you can add to these liquidity so you can see right now here's the total liquidity of the pool so if you had this you can come over here and provide liquidity and what that means is you're actually going to earn an annual percentage rate and that's 4.13 or 11.79, and it varies depending on the pool that you're adding to. So when you come here, it's going to, you'll hit the unlock to just initiate it, but the important thing to note, when you're providing liquidity, you have to provide 50% of each of the tokens or coins. So whatever you're providing, whatever the pair is, you have to provide it in equal increments. So when you do that, you will be issued a certain amount of what they call LP tokens or liquidity provider tokens. So that's what you get from providing your liquidity. Now what's gonna happen is people are gonna buy and sell and buy and sell in these different pools. And every time that happens, some of your money is gonna go and some of this is gonna get more and this side's gonna get lower and then back and forth and back and forth. At any time you can cash out, you can take your liquidity tokens and then get the money back. So if you were, to if you were staking in the Ethereum DAI liquidity pool, you would earn Ethereum DAI liquidity tokens. And then when you cashed back out, you would earn the equivalent amount of Ethereum and DAI that you had there. So plus, plus whatever fees and, and things that you've earned on top. So the other thing to look at in addition to the pools is a few of these have what's called farming. And yield farming, farming, that's kind of a, a hot topic right now. I'm going to explain it at a very high level. I don't want to confuse people or lose you along the way. But it's a way for a newer exchange to get you to hold your liquidity on their network to increase the volume coming in. So they'll, they'll offer you a much, much higher rate of return for staking your actual liquidity tokens. So step one, you would 
provide liquidity to one of the pools. Once provided, you would gain liquidity tokens. Then you can come over here to the farming tab and you can deposit your liquidity tokens to any of these things. And you can see here, I mean, the returns are ridiculous. So if you have liquidity tokens for Ethereum and one inch token, and one inch is the one that I just mentioned is the governance token, which has gone from $1.20 to like $5.50 in a matter of 21 days. If you had that, you could deposit that here and you're going to earn additional one inch rewards at the rate of 109% APY. So that's really interesting. You know, I know that's a lot of information. Let me know if you have any questions on this. This exists on some other exchanges as well, but I just like this interface. I mean, it looks really nice. You can buy here as well. I'm not gonna show you that because I've never used it before, but it just looks nice. They have information on your different pairs. You can come over here, choose what you want. The other thing, guys, if you're using a decentralized exchange, I mentioned wrapped ether. And wrapped ether is essentially Ethereum, but wrapped for the Ethereum network. So if you use this instead of Ethereum, or if you cash out from one of these tokens to wrapped ether, you're gonna save a little bit on the transaction fees. And I've done a video on why that is. I'll leave a link to that video in the description, but just remember wrapped ether, if you're just gonna keep it on there for trading, that's a, that's a tip as well, a little pro tip for you. So let me know what you think of one inch. I've been using it. This is how I you know, get these tokens that I talk about on my different videos. One inch exchange, let me know what you think guys. Until the next time, be safe.